everybody, it's me, SnorkFilligree3, and welcome back! So, uh, first things first, please excuse my voice for this video. I've had an awful cold, I guess, or sore throat for the past week and a half now, and my voice is just now getting back to actually being able to talk. So I'm gonna do my best to do this voiceover in one take. So, first off here, I've done my sketch and transferred it over using red transfer paper. This is, um, Soral wax-free transfer paper onto my 16x20 Blick, uh, cradled birch board. <sighs> it was a mouthful. Um, right now I'm just going in and using plain water and then watercolor washes on specific areas of the wood because, like watercolor paper, the watercolor tends to stay in the areas that are wet. And it's a great way to try and get more even coats on these bigger canvases. This piece was actually a real struggle to get up to this point because I originally tried to transfer it using graphite transfer paper and like just tracing over it with like a stick and I didn't push hard enough. So I had to completely retrace the whole thing because I moved the transfer paper to check how I had done and it was not right. And so I had to redo it. Uh, so getting to this point was a struggle all on its own. And this was actually an assignment for my illustration class. And so in that class, we had to do thumbnail sheets and color studies and value studies and all of this stuff, which is cool and useful, but it takes a really long time. And I overestimated the amount of time that I would need for this, or underestimated, excuse me. So I did this whole piece in the span of like three days or something like that, which I thought would be enough time. And it um, was not. I mean, I got the piece done and everything, and it was great, but I definitely would not do that again. So, I mean, it is nice to have a color study and everything before doing a piece because you kind of know what you're doing already, but for the pieces that I normally do like this, I kind of already have an idea of what I want. Be and a lot of the stuff that I do like this on the wood is very naturally built up because it is such a fluid medium. It's kind of like, oh, there's a dark spot over here. Let's accentuate that because I think it looks cool kind of thing. So it was a really interesting process to have a full map of what I was supposed to be doing. It's kind of weird actually, but. So about process here, uh, for the different sections, I had to mix up a lot of watercolor just because it was such a big piece. This is actually the biggest watercolor I have ever done, which is cool and I didn't realize it as I was planning it. Uh, Oh, no, I take that back. I guess this is just the most watercolor I've done because I did Sunbeam, if you guys remember her, a uh, link to her in the cards, but she was a 16 by 20 watercolor and because she only took me a couple of nights, I thought I was gonna not need a ton of time for this because I was familiar with the process, but I guess that Felicity is just a lot more detailed than Sunbeam and don't get me wrong, Sunbeam was detailed in different ways, but I guess just because Felicity was a lot less natural than Sunbeam. Like Sunbeam, I just sketched the thumbnail, liked it, and then made it. And I guess that's something to say too about making stuff that you think is cool and whatnot. Because if I were to do this piece again, and if I had more time, I would have done a lot more candles in the background, because I thought I think that would be cool. Uh, which you guys can't see yet because they don't exist yet, but um, yeah. Just going back and forth with my teacher about what was reading and what wasn't. Uh, this piece was originally, in my thumbnail, supposed to be Sierra, who you may or may not remember from one of my older videos. She was this, like, demon girl, and she had a cool leather jacket, and my classmates and my teacher didn't think it read well, and thought it was weird that she was, like, a demon but had, like, a phone, and it was... And, you know, I'm all embarrassed to explain my story to, uh, the teacher and everything, so I just kind of went with it and changed everything and changed the pose and changed who she was and changed everything and so I did come up with a piece that I was excited to make but I think I would like to either revisit the idea or something along those lines because I think it's a cool concept and I feel like I want to add more candles. Uh, so for my idea I had actually looked a lot to the Baz Luhrmann version of Romeo and Juliet in the scene where I believe it's Julia is laying on the altar in the church after she's like quote unquote died, like she faked her death, 
and I thought that imagery was really cool, so I did have a Pinterest board for this piece that I was looking at. Um, it's a secret board because it doesn't really go with everything else I have. Uh, let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing like my piece planning Pinterest boards, and I can make those public. But uh, yeah, so now I'm moving on to the Copic part, just because I was so pressed for time. Uh, please excuse my jammy top. Uh, your girl likes to work comfortably. And uh, I'm using Copic markers and pencils to go in and detail the face. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I knew the hair was going to take a bit of a while, just because I had a lot of surface area to cover, and I wanted it to look nice. But thankfully, because her hair was so dark, I only needed a couple colors. It was very interesting having to work fast on this project because it is so detailed. And I say details, there's just a lot of different areas to do. It's not incredibly intricate or anything, but also because of those beams of light. The whole idea was that in those beams of light, the devil horns didn't really show. And so it was like, ooh, where'd they go? And then in the beams of light also, there are bases underneath the candles, and so those show through onto the other beams of light. But then in the areas of shadow, the candles are floating, which I thought was cool. And then also in the shadow area, her eye is yellow instead of blue. Because I was trying to do this uh, under a time constraint, uh, a couple areas of footage are cut out of this, and I'm sorry, it's just because my camera battery died or whatever, or ran out, of, ran out of memory, and I had to keep going and didn't have time to change it or charge it or what have you. So, I feel like you still get uh, a really good representation of what the process was like. And I did try to include some clips in real time. I, after compiling all the footage though, realized that I had, like, 20 minutes of video and so I tried to trim it down uh, we're still here as I'm recording this at 14 minutes so that's not much shorter but I hope you guys don't mind I mean when I first started my YouTube channel the longer videos were always the ones that I liked to watch anyway whenever I do them nowadays they get a lot less traffic than my shorter videos and I'm trying to go 10 minutes nowadays but sometimes I just need to make videos that I like too So up in the back of the piece you can see that there is a window uh, that was originally going to be like a stained glass window and I was going to incorporate more beams of light, but because I was nervous about emailing the teacher about changing my initial thumbnail that he had approved, I end up painting it out. And as a result, the final piece looks kind of empty. Oh, side note. So the whole idea for this piece, or assignment I guess, was that it had to be 11 by 17. And I went to the store to buy a piece of wood that was 11 by 17, and apparently none of the stores in my area carry that. They have like 11 by 14 and then 12 by 12, and I'm, that wasn't what I needed. Or 20 by 20, I think. But every size but the one I needed. So I decided that I was going to do 11 or 16 by 20, and then just crop the final image that I submitted. So that's why all of the candles and beams of light make more sense in the center of the image there. Like off to the side, like the beams of light don't really make any sense and they all crisscross and then don't show again. And that is why. If I end up putting prints of this on my red bubble, I will definitely be putting up the cropped version just because the full version doesn't really make much sense. Now, just to give you an idea of what it's like to mix up those watercolor washes, I decided to film my palette for a bit. The first time I had done this, I definitely did not make enough of this brown kind of sepia color I was using for the background, so I decided to mix up a whole bunch of it so I wouldn't run out again. And I put it in this jar so I could seal the lid. Fast forward, and now I have this jar of dried on brown wash. So maybe I'll find a use for that eventually and I'll re-wet it, but right now I just have this jar that's uh, used for that. 
be good to put in the background of something somewhere. I had not intended to go back over the Copic areas with watercolor, but after adding all that contrast and saturation to the certain areas, it did not seem dark enough anymore, and so I decided to add another layer. Thankfully, Copic is alcohol-based, and so it won't smear with water. The only problem is if you decide to do this technique on watercolor paper, and you try to go back over it with watercolor, it will kind of repel it, so just be warned. Now to make her stand out a bit more, I'm going around her instead of over her again, because I think she looks like she's in shadow. Now it's time to make the background look like it's actually far away. As you can see off the left there, you can see my color study and the picture of the candles. Well, I guess this is the screen cap that I found on Pinterest, and that's covering my value study. Both of those were painted in Photoshop, and I believe I just used a mouse for those because I forgot my uh, tablet that day. I want to do some videos talking about what art school has been like so far, but I don't really know what to talk about. So if you have any like ideas or questions about that, like let me know in the comments so I can get an idea because I remember when I was applying to schools, I was really curious as to what I need and everything. And now that it's here, it's kind of like, not that I don't remember what it was like, but I almost don't know what would be interesting. Funny. Seeing this piece in real life, I keep thinking how simple it is and how I should have done more on it. But after seeing this video as I'm recording the voiceover, I'm kind of realizing uh, how much work actually was crammed into this in such a short amount of time. And uh, New Year's resolution I'm gonna give my try at least to give myself more credit when I work on stuff. I tend to kind of be like, oh, that was so easy, you could have done better, and maybe you just did enough. We'll do better next time. It's all good. Now comes one of my favorite parts, uh, adding the detail to the face. Uh, probably only a mere second to doing the Copic work, it really just adds life to the features. Also, who doesn't love doing the eyeliner, right? And if you look at the eye that's in shadow, it's actually a goat's pupil. And then to add highlights, I'm using a jelly roll pen and a damp brush, which is a great little trick that I learned when I was working on Sunbeam. So without further ado, here's the finished piece. liked it please don't forget to leave me a comment telling me what you enjoyed leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it at all and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos coming in 2019 i'll see you there all right bye, -bye. yeah that's a mood i know it is isn't it